yeah just to yes good evening everyone and uh, with your all uh, support your interests and uh, we have completed one year of this academic discussion so far we started this series with the aim that uh, because of covid the physical education the education uh, to the students were halted but uh, somehow we managed to start this series on focusing on basically in gie and hpb oncology and covered so many topics of so, uh, fourth now and we have reached for the discussion of rectal cancer and uh, it's been one year uh, very good wonderful academic discussions every time and uh, this time we'll be focusing on the new adjuvant approaches in rectal cancer so very um, forward looking topic new upcoming developments coming up people are really confused uh, what approach to start with how to start and uh, these kind of discussions will be taking forward so basically uh, it will be starting from the basics of uh, new adjuvant approaches lecture delivered by dr tp sahu he is a senior medical oncologist uh, um uh, we all know him and he is from silver line hospital bhopal welcome sir so the lecture will be followed by a panel discussion and which will be moderated by dr manish jain who is our senior surgical oncologist in max super specialty hospital saket and the eminent panelist would be dr sumit goel he is a senior medical oncologist from rajiv gandhi cancer institute new delhi dr deepak damodaran he is a gi uh, oncology surgeon uh, from mvr cancer hospital calicut kerala and uh, dr gagan saini we all know he is a senior radiation oncologist from max hospital vishali new delhi dr shabnam bashir she is a senior uh, surgical oncologist from noora hospital shrinagar and dr rahul krishna tri who is a senior radiation oncologist from tmh mumbai so eminent uh, very good faculty members so i hope for a wonderful academic discussion so uh, without wasting time sir i welcome you for a lecture and yeah. then we take over for a panel discussion yeah thank you dr safali and thanks for the invite and uh, uh, let me see how uh, well i can set the topic up for the discussion and uh, my uh, we discussed this last it's not there full screen one minute let me just go and reshare it i'm getting this problem now this yeah so uh, when when we discussed last it was more of that it will be uh, to discuss the uh, the total new adjuvant probably also the scheduling of radiotherapy although i'm not a radiation oncologist but i'll put the topic i'll put the evidence so that the panel can really uh, ch chalk out the nitty gritties uh, and i i'm trying to cover and definitely my last part of the talk will be on the total new adjuvant therapy and that's what is the in thing and how we should adapt that into a practice that's what it will be okay so uh, without wasting much time i'll just go into that and to jump into the topic if you look like uh, this has been in the uh, like in 1970s and 80s when we this data was there then this trial was one of the first most spoken about trial it is in that non tme era where they never we used never used to perform this surgery and this was that around 227 patients were randomized four arm surgery versus surgery followed by chemotherapy alone and the chemotherapy protocols would be something very very different from what we follow nowadays although five few being there since then the arm c was surgery followed by radiotherapy alone that was 40 to 48 gray we might discuss about that debate about that but we have moved ahead in the planning of radiotherapy and also about the doses of radiotherapy and schedule also and the arm d was a uh, surgery followed by the uh, post op concurrent chemo radiotherapy followed by a maintenance therapy and if you look at it the data which showed that there was a difference and the benefit was there and if you look at the top part of the arm which was the concurrent chemo radiotherapy and the lower part which was only surgery and this is what the data was all about the chemo and radiotherapy graphs are here somewhere the first publication happened in the enigm 1986 85 and the second happened as a letter to the editor in 86 and what has happened in the next 18 months is that there was a statistical difference between the combination arm and the surgery alone arm and the concur and the, the chemotherapy or radiotherapy alone arm were somewhere lying in the between so this proved the first evidence came that a concurrent chemo radiotherapy given after or surgery was better than surgery alone so moving forward was the second trial which we always put together and this is again that is coming from the north central cancer treatment group 
and this trial again published in NEGM 1991 had around 204 patients against stage 2, stage 3 resected. They had RT alone versus a concurrent 5FU with RT Ajay. and there was one cycle of chemotherapy preceding and one cycle after, uh, after the concurrent radio chemotherapy was done. This proved again one thing that the concurrent chemo radiotherapy was the way to go ahead and radiotherapy alone was not good enough because all of us know most of the recurrences happened due to the distant METs and definitely local recurrence was a problem which has been solved to quite a bit with our techniques now. So this showed that in median follow-up of seven years, there was a significant 47% reduction in the risk of relapse and 36% reduction in the risk of cancer-related death with chemoradiotherapy. Local recurrences were diminished by around 50% and distant METs were also decreased by around 40%. So benefits of adjuvant chemoradiotherapy was established and moving forward, then came that it should be pre-op or post-op. Pre-operative chemoradiotherapy did have its own advantages, better local regional control. There was some data, although there's a small, there's one trial that showed a survival benefit. Otherwise, most of the trials have not shown that. Improved compliance is very much a consistent phenomena. Downstaging is a consistent phenomena with the pre-operative procedure, what we do, a radiotherapy, chemotherapy or chemoradiotherapy. Sphincter preservation was again, proven to be in most of the trials, the low risk of bowel dysfunction. This is something that we need to remember that anything that's given preoperatively, the healing of the, and the, the drug delivery, like say chemotherapy, given post-surgery, pre-surgery, because the vascularity is maintained, you would be able to deliver the drugs in total because of the, the vasculature is maintained. Even the radiotherapy, because in the pre-op uh, setting, the chances of getting a bowel dysfunction or a problem due to because of the intact anatomy and the vasculature is much, much better. That's well, well documented. And there is low risk of chronic anastomotic strictures. This is a trial which all the radiation oncologists are well aware, even we as medical oncologists are sure that if you look at the short course, the Swedish rectal cancer trial published in 1997, the first thing that was a path changing that if you give a short course, five dose, uh, five fractions, and then after a week, within a week, you operate. So that is something that surgery comes in very, very fast. And versus upfront surgery, no RT, it showed two things. Decrease in the local, local recurrence. And this is one trial which has not been duplicated in the larger trials also. The OS was statistically significant, which was even on the prolonged follow-up. But if the, and the irradiation did not increase post-operative mortality. Now, moving forward, the Dutch trial, the Dutch GME trial is the most spoken about trial. It's a little larger. The Swedish was 1,000 odd, and this is 1,800 odd patients. The primary endpoint here being OS and the local control. The, here it was again the same thing, the pre-op radiotherapy, five, uh, five gray, five fractions into five days followed by TME versus TME alone. This put up two, three things. First, the local, the local control, uh, the, the, there were lesser local recurrences with the radiotherapy. The five-year local control was again better. If you look at it, which patients really benefited, and if you look at it, the treatment group, uh, the patients who are at least the middle or lower rectum probably benefited more. The stage three, stage four patients benefited more with the addition of radiotherapy to the surgery. So there was no difference in the OS even on a prolonged follow-up. That's something that one has to remember. Except for the Swedish, none of the trials have shown this. So now came, and there was a disparity because the Europeans accepted the short course. The Americans were very clear that the long course radiotherapy was the standard to go ahead. So, and Americans even tried to do a pre-op chemo radiotherapy versus a post-op chemo radiotherapy before this German rectal cancer study happened, but they could not recruit. And this is, has been a consistent thing. Many trials in the rectum, rectum scenario really have not taken up on the recruitment. Some trials have, could not complete the recruitment. But the German rectal cancer study, again, well published some 20 years back, put up a pre-op long course radiotherapy with a 5FU given day one, week one, week two, week five, that is day one, day 29, versus if you have a post-op, it was the same thing, except for there was a boost of 5.4 grade to the tumor bed. And this included T3, T4, or has to be node positive, 820 odd patients, the primary endpoint was OS, only thing, two things, the OS was not different, point number one, but there was something very, very different that the preoperative, when we give a chemo radiotherapy, 
the compliance and the receiving the full dose of radiotherapy was much much better here very clearly proven which was statistically significant 54 versus 92 that's something that we all need to remember even chemo that will also happen that the pre-operative delivery of chemotherapy at least in rectal cancer is very consistent that it has been much much better than what happens in the post-op scenario maybe the tune of 30 to 40 percent as in the radiotherapy thing even the toxicity the grade three, grade four toxicity, the diarrhea was much lesser for the pre-operative. That is again something, and the long-term toxicity were also much better with the pre-operative. The local control, the cumulative incidence of recurrence was better for the pre-operative, but no other oncological data was statistically significant, and both arms were otherwise equal. So the, it concluded two things. You had better splinter preservation. You had more toxicity probably for the post-op, Five-year local recurrences was better for the pre-op, and this is where the trial ended. The primary endpoint OS was exactly the same in both arms. Now, moving forward, short course long, the, the, and the long course radiotherapy, which would be a better, the Polish trial, again, arm A, arm B, where it was the same thing as in the Swedish versus arm B, which was a long course with chemotherapy, and the short course never, we did not have chemotherapy in any of the uh, trials where, because it was just a five-day course. And they operated within one to one and a half months post the completion of radiotherapy. Again, it was around 300 odd patients. Again, the, the inclusion are nearly the same, T3, T4, node positive. And the primary endpoint here being the sphincter preservation. It concluded that there was not much of a difference if you did either way in terms of sphincter preservation. One more thing that is very, very clear that happened here, which could be because of the duration between the radiotherapy and the surgery happened, the path CR was lower in the, in, in the short course. That could have been because you operated within a week and you would not be getting a path CR if you operate so early because you need at least two to three, one to two months to have that response to be there. So it is across trials. When you operate within a week, most of the times you would not get a path CR and the path CR will be much, much inferior than if you operate after probably one to two months. This is something that was there, and that also could be reflected in the positive radial margins. This is the trial, the TROG, which looked at chemotherapy because there was the radiation part, which was nail settled. Here, they wanted to add also chemotherapy because all of us understood that chemotherapy was important. Adjuvant chemotherapy, although does not have a level one evidence as such in rectum, still has been practiced because the 30% of patients usually have a distant metastasis. So this trial in also included the chemotherapy in the pre-op, they included six cycles of chemotherapy because you did not give anything in the uh, um, uh, new adjuvant thing. In the uh, long course, you had two cycles before and four cycles after, two with radiotherapy. It again told you very, very clear two things. The path CR was significantly higher the long course, the reason which I've already alluded to. There's no difference in the OS, the RFS, and the rates of distant recurrences. So the local control could be more effective in, 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 in the, the short, in, in reducing the LR for the distant tumors. So the, now come to the second last point, and then I'll go to the total new adjuvant. What would be the optimal time for surgery? All of us do believe, the meta-analysts do believe that probably one to two months, six weeks would be an optimal time. Most of the trials have allowed around four to eight weeks post the long course to be an optimal time to operate. If you delay it by three months, does it really affect? There is data that if the delay happens 11 weeks also post chemo radiotherapy, that would there is no detrimental impact on the oncological outcomes. And if you operate within seven days, also that it could be okay, but six to ten weeks is a after full course <coughs> CTRT would be the ideal. And the optimal time of surgery, there was one study which looked at it. Short course, the Stockholm 3 trial, short course, operate within a week. Short course, delay it by four to eight weeks as you normally do with a long course. And a long course RT, delay it by four to eight weeks. And it was a non inflated trial, around 800 patients. And it showed two things, that there is no much difference in OS, RFS. The local recurrences were also non-inferior. Even the acute radiation toxicities, although numerically a little higher, were not that much statistically different. And the post-op complications were little more in the short course without delay. But with delay, the complications were much, much, much lesser. So there are no significant difference between treatment groups for cumulative incidence of local recurrence or of distant metastasis or overall survival, irrespective of the timing of surgery, which you did, 
except for probably a little bit higher post of complication for immediate surgery beyond the short course radiotherapy. So now moving forward, all of us know this, what would be the optimal chemotherapy regimen with radiotherapy? And all of us believe that capsidabin probably today 825 milligram per meter square twice a day for 14 days, one week off is the standard. Many different drugs have been tried. Few have done 5FU. Most of the older protocols are 5FU. But I think today capsidabin is this way to go forward. Why are we going to talk of neoadjuvant? Because if you look at adjuvant in rectal cancers across, you would not see any trial as such as positive. You see that in Europe, in the uh, Scandinavian countries, people do not practice adjuvant in rectum. The Dutch, the Swedish, they're very clear that rectum adjuvant does not matter much. The Americans still practice. Most of our India also we practice as we do in colon cancer, stage three, stage four. We do give the adjuvant. But if you want to get a level one evidence, you would be finding it very hard to prove why you are going to give for it. That's why the focus is shifting towards a new adjuvant. And if you look at the meta-analysis, there's one meta-analysis, which I've not put in the slides, has shown an improvement in survival, but most of them have shown no improvement in survival for adjuvant chemotherapy in rectal cancers. Mm. Which one I showed, and this is the second one which is there. And this is also showing that oxaliplatin base also has not shown to be superior to in, in adjuvant protocol. But if you no need to do something in adjuvant, the data is there, probably a Falfox or oxaliplatin based regimen is better than only fire to base regimen. But why not adjuvant? Because if you look at cross trials, 30% to 40% do not start adjuvant therapy. It is the old trial, a liver missile trial, and this is there 30%. Look at the NCCN data, which is collected across few years in US. Again, only 70% completed in adjuvant, 30% could not because of multiple reasons. But the take home message is, if you give adjuvant and your way of giving is adjuvant, then 30 to 40 percent would not complete or would not receive adjuvant, complete name would not receive adjuvant protocol because of the multiple problems they have post operatively or someone refuses or they have cardiac co events. One more important if someone post operative has a problem beyond eight weeks starting adjuvant protocol, again a meta analysis, it does not benefit. The benefit already controversial becomes furthermore shrunken if there is a delay in ad instituting adjuvant chemotherapy beyond eight weeks. And one more thing why we should probably going towards a new adjuvant protocol total is if you have a response, which is called complete intermediate or poor, complete is something which you have do not have any tumor tissue in the nodes or in the uh, primary tumor. Intermediate is something which has been downstaged, probably to the YT1 and 2, but not still there is a tumor. Poor response is where the nodes are positive, probably still, or uh, YP uh, T3, T4 is still there. So that is called a poor response. And this is again proven that if you have a complete response, the blue line, you are going to do much better than the yellow line with intermediate response compared to poor response. And this is across stage two and stage three. So one thing is proven if you achieve a path CR, the patient is going to do the best way. And what could be the thing that you could do to make that thing possible? So there are problems are plenty. No proven benefit of adjuvant chemotherapy as such in rectum. Most of the failures are distant. 30% do not start adjuvant therapy. Another substantial do not complete the same. Better outcomes with higher paths here as proven in the last slide. So we can do better and we should be doing it. And the answer probably is the total new adjuvant therapy, pushing the new adjuvant protocol the adjuvant protocol to the new adjuvant. What happens is you increase the path CR, increase the downstaging of tumors, the compliance which is there, which is a poor compliance to adjuvant 30-40% do not start, it can probably be addressed. And there is the early addressal of the micrometastatic disease because in rectum, typically 30 to 35% have a distant failure. You have early reversal of stoma and ileostomy because you are completing your therapy earlier. Like in other cases, you would be delaying that by four to six months. You have decreased toxicity, that's also well proven, and organ preservation is potentially there in a total new adjuvant therapy. So this is the paradigm. Either you do an induction chemotherapy, followed by a chemo radiotherapy, or you do a chemo radiotherapy, followed by consultation therapy, and then operate. You could do either. There are trials for both. I will, in three, four slides, I'll complete what I want to say in this. This all started probably with this uh, Lancet publication where 
There were 292 patients, a phase two non-randomized, phase two, phase three patients. They gave CTRT. In the group one, they did not give anything and they went for surgery. In the group two, they gave for two cycles. In the group three, they gave three, four cycles. In the group four, after the chemo radiotherapy, they gave six cycles. So that's incremental of two cycles of modified polyphoxic in group two, group three, and group four. And then all of the four groups went for total mesorectal excision. What happened is they found increased path CR as the number of cycles of chemotherapy increased from none to six cycles. So 18 versus 25 versus 30 versus 38. And this is a proof of concept that if you give chemotherapy and, I might, and, and if you give chemotherapy prior, your chances of getting a response would be much better for a path CR. With this, these are the two most talked about trials, the Rapido trial and the Porridge. Little bit of difference in how they have been planned. If we look at the Rapido, the Dutch group did it along with five, six more countries of Spain and the neighboring countries. There is a short course RT, five gray five as in the uh, Swedish trial. Then they gave chemotherapy. This was a fall fox. This could be a nine cycles of capox or a, sorry, six cycles of capox versus nine cycles of fall fox followed by surgery, or they gave chemo radiotherapy as the standard, what we do for the long course. Then they operated in two months or one to two months post this completion, then gave chemotherapy for six months. That is what we standardly follow. They found that there was a more path CR in the uh, total neoadjuvant arm versus the standard arm. If you look at the porridge, it is different in that respect that you have in the experimental arm, first the chemotherapy, followed by the chemo radiation, and then you go for surgery, and then if required, you go for uh, adjuvant therapy. The regimen which they used in porridge was a fall for inox, which they used irinotican, fall fox, along with the five two skeleton, not the, fall, not the fall fox arm, which we normally have seen in Rapido. The concept in porridge was the fall fox regimens had not shown any benefit as such in the OS benefit or the disease-free survival, so they wanted to add Falfiri, which was more of the regimen which had shown maximum responses in the metastatic setting. And then they operated and then they went for adjuvant Falfox, not the Falfox. Look at the porridge. They looked at CT3, T4, and they also looked at something that was within 15 centimeters of the uh, anal verge. They had 461 patients, the good PS, and the primary endpoint was disease free survival. The regimen is well, the protocol I have well described. 230, 230 in each arm. And when they looked at this, they found that the experimental arm, which was the total new adjuvant therapy arm, had superior DFS three years. Three years metastatic free survival was superior. And the three years OS, although we need to mature this data more, was again superior. And the path CR was more than doubled in the total new adjuvant arm. This is what is shown. We will come switch to Rapido which was after the Dutch proved in the metastatic M1 trial that the, 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 this, the, the, this way of approach is better. They proved with that regimen what we spoke of 920 patients, one is to one randomization that the three year D disease tre related treatment failure and the three years distant metastasis was again in favor of the total neoadjuvant therapy. The OS was not statistically significant. This is in contrast to what you see in the OS of the the porridge, which is statistically significant, the path CRs were again significant in favor of the uh, total new agent therapy. And this is what Lancet wrote in, the, in, in, the, in their article, that probably this is the way how the future is going to change. And this is probably the, might be the discussion what is going to happen. And if that's not enough, even the trials have shown, you have a shorter inpatient admission post-surgery if you do the total new adjuvant therapy. So, which way is the better way? Should we go for an induction chemo followed by CTRT or should we go for a CTRT followed by induction? This has been tried in a um, relatively shorter trial, in a phase two trial published in GSEO. This <coughs> trial had 300 odd patients, one to one randomization. They proved very, very clearly two things. The hypothesis was the path CR would increase to 25% from 15%. And to cut the whole story short, the group B, was the way which proved to be fitting into the and fulfilling the hypothesis that if you give a radiotherapy and chemo early, then followed by constellation chemotherapy, 
then probably your chances of getting a pap smear is more because you are going to let the chemotherapy a thing act and the gap of 2 to 3 months for which you are giving on chemo probably adds on and the effect of radio chemotherapy is there evident on the pap smear that was not evident probably when you follow it with the induction chemo then uh, chemo radiotherapy and then we give it but one thing is very clear this is not the last of it the concept is both the concepts have been proven in two different trials but probably giving a chemo radiotherapy earlier could be the better way because logically you can give more time for the pap smear to happen so concluding the tnt impacts the dfs and the incidence of distant meds no proof of improve uh, no proof of improvement in os yet yet for its short term 3 years os data is positive the best sequence that i showed you what the data is the conceptually it probably goes that go for a chemo radiotherapy and then consolidate with a chemotherapy and then operate probably the way to go ahead but you have seen porridge and that was a very different thing and still showed a benefit should we this is a very interesting trial i am not much spoken about but this is again a very small trial we need bigger data to look into this this is a opra trial looked at stage 2 stage 3 this are very important thing that they go, went for total new agent approach they looked at organ preservation so if someone on mr they looked at and found to be a clinical complete response they just observed and they found that 50% of the 80% of time you just at three years did not need a surgery at all in contrast if you did not have a response on the radiology those patients would relapse faster same thing if there was something of a not, not confirmed cr something on the mr looks dirty but definitely response was significant then also 50% of the time at three years people did not progress so this comes to a very clear concept that probably in the future we are already having trials could we wait and watch in some patients who are doing very good post new adjuvant uh, total new adjuvant therapy and those patients can we avoid surgery because the os is not impacted and probably only treat on relapse the point against because rectum is known to have a metastatic disease would we be losing patients but that data i think will be proven in the days to come so i end it with that the total new agent therapy if you are given to the patient the data shows superior compliance lesser metastatic disease superior dfs lesser toxicity that's well proven in the porridge trial and better quality of life although the quality of life long term data is still pending and what more do you want probably the day is going to come where we could avoid surgery in some of our patients if after post total new agent chemotherapy have a radiologically assessment done and have shown to have a complete cr if that can be done and they can be put under observation and the observation can be quite rigid they it could be expensive but at least more many of them could be safe and organ preservation could be done so this is where i stop and i thank you for the opportunity thank you thank you so much sir wonderfully summarized each and every trial discussed so um, one question i would like to ask so uh, the tnt approach which uses chemo first followed by chemo radiation as you showed in prodish 23 also the regimen used was polferinox and mm -hmm. which we find actually sometimes difficult to do practically the three drug regimen so what is your take on using folfox or uh, in such setting instead of polferinox we have some data though yeah. it's not a level one evidence for that so how do you uh, take on it yeah. uh, there are two things here if i look at the trial setting which is a strict uh, restricted scenario you would find in the porridge 90% completing the scheduled therapy and that is a huge thing to do because in polferinox we all expect it to be toxic even when i started polferinox myself in the metastatic in the metastatic setting i thought it will be very toxic it did not turn out to be at least i would be lucky i can say because some of others you would have a very different experience but in the trial also it showed 90% completed the scheduled therapy of polferinox six cycles and second why they chose polferinox is very well described in the porridge uh, paper that they found that none of the data which had used polfox in the uh, new adjuvant scenario so there are data where the radiotherapy was not used and they used polfox only as new adjuvant to to cyto reduce it or to have a pathological response and that data was negative for polfox they they told that 
if you add bevacizumab to chemo or you add folfox it did not and data was not supporting it that is why they wanted to go for a regimen which has shown its uh, responses and advantage in the scenario of folforinox in the metastate setting that's why they did this and and very clearly the trial showed 90% could complete this and if it, they could do it mm-hmm. and these patients are normally very fit and rectum is known to happen in little younger patients i think we should be able to complete the protocol sir limitations of some of these trial was actually the oligometastatic disease was also included in some of these trials so because in rectum we don't have a clear cut guideline how to follow in the oligometastatic setting also so um, i I'm uh, not apart sure. from that I'm leaving not sure to... i read both the protocols i read the whole paper of it and they were very clear in their way of assessment they assess the patient rapido and prodig were level 1 for uh, locally advanced only Yeah. yeah. So, 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 if you look at the, if you're looking at the Dutch M1 trial, which was on a metastatic disease, they started off the total neoadjuvant approach and they went for operation and they expected the response to happen and that's how it happened. But for the total neoadjuvant, right. if you're looking at the locally advanced T3, T4, node positive or the circumferential radial margin positive or the what are the criteria was in the pro trial or a vascular extra mural vascular involvement, it was very clear that they assess this patient very very strictly. pre randomization pre post chemotherapy post radio chemotherapy and after surgery before they start adjuvant chemotherapy and completion adjuvant chemotherapy and they excluded metastatic disease always so i feel that data is very clear that it is not for a metastatic disease if you want to follow the metastatic data the dutch m1 is the way to go ahead. right and there is one question in chat box any role of biologicals in uh, new adjuvant setting uh, i think uh, the bev data was negative and then the, when cetuximab there was some data which was again not very encouraging i would not recommend anything in this total new adjuvant approach arena to do it in a non metastatic setting that's where yeah. i would right. dr right. rahul so uh, wants to the, add something yeah dr nikhil yeah yeah please dr rahul wants to add something yeah hi thank is you raise uh, his hand dr rahul yeah 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 dr sahu it was amazing talk so just to add a little one more question to comparing rapido and porridge so wh- if i go with short course radiation treatment would you go for polfox or polfiri because you know uh, polfiri is adding better in porridge and uh, you know for rapido i would go for shortening the treatment for radiation compliance right. other things you know going for 5 weeks and all those things you know so yeah as the red the trials had two different regimens if i am a, a purist in form and if i want to follow the rapido it's a folfox or capox uh, the porridge was right. a folforinox that was induction chemotherapy so after a chemo radio, after a short course radiotherapy they use folfox in the um, in the rapido so if i'm using a short course the data for today is for a folfox or a capox that's for a purist form if you ask me if i can jump the gun i would be more comfortable probably using a folforinox folfori alone there has no data it's either a capox folfox or a folforinox where we use all the regimens together because i've used now folforinox for quite a bit of patients i feel very comfortable i'm not worried about toxicity and this porridge data gives me a lot of confidence although to tell you that the folforinox was given before the concurrent chemotherapy was given in the porridge here it is the other way around and but i would be uh, if i'm a purist i'll go for folfox that's what it should be because if i'm following the rapido it should be that way but i would be also okay if someone gives a folforinox because the responses are expected to be little better right Thanks. right so that's why sir, i asked you that because rapido uh, after short course use folfox so uh, what difference does adding of irinotecan if we start up front makes does it uh, makes a difference after uh, radiation that we use folfox the tumor burden from the primary is less or what is working there uh see a uh, lot of questions would not be answered with these two trials and that's why people have not adapted this but one thing is the approach is now acceptable to all of us what is the ideal new adjuvant regimen could be argued upon that's how i take it but i feel that when you have no adjuvant no trial favoring adjuvant chemotherapy in rectum and 30% to 40% do not ever receive or do not receive the right doses in the adjuvant scenario if there is no data for its benefit if you are not able to give it and across the trials it has been consistent not only one trial and there is data to show that new agent approach is better i'll be very very comfortable with doing this way of doing uh, all right 
Sure, but Dr. Sahu, so, can uh, I? Uh, Yeah, 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 let's move to the panel. No problem. We can we can discuss in the panel. Yeah, we we can discuss. We should discuss in the panel. We'll discuss in the panel. Sure. Yes. Uh, I, I one think one Dr. Sahu is the chat. Yeah, wasting time. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, Dr. Sahu. No, no, I, I can one more things. question in the chat, which should be taken up in the panel. I think that will be better. Fine, fine. So I think that was a very uh, uh, excellent summary of everything, and uh, there are definitely more questions which uh, our colleague Manish is going to address in the panel discussion. uh so uh, manish please yeah uh, thank you dr nikhil uh, thank you dr sahu it was an amazing lecture it was uh, actually very helpful and uh, we have heard a very strong view point from medical oncologist uh, regarding the their uh, uh, means uh, this upcoming approach tnt their one of their favorite approach i think we can now i can share my screen and in this panel discussion we'll like to uh see how we can select the patients for which different uh, modality actually so we'll take other panelist uh, opinion in that i think my screen is visible not no yet. dr manish still not still not okay one second na aap share karo one second or you can send it to yeah, yeah. No, no, dr it's... nikhil he can share yeah, yeah otherwise one second yeah it is it is now opening up yes it's opening okay so yeah so uh, uh, please do it in the full mode yes yeah so uh, the uh, purpose of this panel discussion is like we have uh, heard from dr sahu what are the different uh, neoadjuvant strategies which are there for management of ca rectum particularly locally advanced ca rectum which is non metastatic and uh, uh, so uh, we have heard like it can be a neoadjuvant short course radiation it can be a neoadjuvant long course radiation with chemotherapy it can be short course radiation with adding with chemotherapy it can be tnt tnt also different approaches so we have very eminent panelist which was in, uh, initially introduced by dr shepali once uh, so we have medical oncologist dr tp sahu who has given a lecture to us and dr sumit goel a senior medical oncologist from rajiv gandhi cancer hospital uh, surgeons we have dr deepak damodaran from mvr cancer hospital calicut and dr shabnam bashir from noora hospital shrinagar and radiation oncologist we have dr gagan saini from max hospital veshali and dr rahul krishnarthi from tmh mumbai so with with this eminent panel we'll going to discuss how and when we have to choose which modality which we have to choose when we are deciding ca rectum it is going to be a case based panel discussion and as we know these are the controversial issues for discussion in all ca rectum panel this is like role of multidisciplinary approach new adjuvant versus adjuvant radiation radiation therapy in upper rectum which will going to discuss in one of our case new adjuvant long course radiation versus short course radiation uh, will uh, take the opinion of uh, our radiation oncologist and role of chemotherapy as new adjuvant modality which we have already listened dr uh, sahu so these controversial issues are almost over now that there is definitely a role of multidisciplinary approach in management of ca rectum and this is also uh, uh, there is no controversy in this like new adjuvant versus adjuvant radiation definitely new adjuvant radiation is better than adjuvant radiation whenever we have to choose radiation as one of the uh, modality for treatment so uh, coming coming to why we are actually discussing as dr sahu mentioned that with any of these uh, most of these trials those who have compared radiation versus uh, crt pre versus post crt or short course radiation as well germ and rectal cancer trial dutch tme trial everywhere you can see local recurrence rate is better it is in the range of around 6 to 8% however in all these trials resistant failure rate is constantly maintained at around 30 to 35% whether we do upfront surgery whether we do new adjuvant radiation long course or short course what whichever modality we choose distant failure rates are still at the in in the range of around 30 to 35% so that's why it is important to choose a modality which can actually bring down the distant failure rates 
while keeping uh, keeping local regional failure under control as well so now there is a time to shift focus from local recurrence to systemic recurrence and how we can def- how we can shift our focus is by better defining the indications for new adjuvant chemotherapy which is known to uh, in some of the trials which is known modality which has reduced the distant failure rates and improved the dfs and what is the other uh, other focus which can be uh, uh, other focus of areas are how we can minimize the use of radiation and its toxicity when we are using it as a one of the modality so we can define indications for upfront surgery on the same time avoiding adjuvant radiation in these patients where we are doing upfront surgery mri can be a very good modality and defining the indications of short course radiation so coming quickly to our case one so he is a 32 year old male patient with good performance status he presented to us with anemia and altered bowel habits for 4 months and on evaluation there was rectal growth on sigmoidoscopy uh, with a biopsy of moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma the mri picture is there on the screen it was primarily an upper rectal growth which you can see and it was just lower margin was just uh, reaching the mid rectum uh, but primarily it was an upper rectal growth it was t3a lesion and uh, uh, mesorectal nodes you can see from the screen there were three two or three mesorectal nodes were there uh, however these mesorectal nodes were away from the crm so crm was free and there was no peritoneal involvement no emy in emvi other investigations ca was 4.2 pet ct uh, pet ct was there was no other metastatic disease so coming to the treatment plans yes if we have a surgeon with the doctor uh, dr deepak if we, if we can take your view how uh, in your practice how do you manage these kinds of patient uh, good evening all of you i uh, thank you nikhil for inviting me for this panel uh, this case i suppose am i audible yes yes you are audible yeah this case is upper mid rectal bulky tumor t3 a you said yes yes t3 it was t3 a with the few mesorectal nodes all mesorectal nodes were away from crm yeah. and uh, there was no emvi it was primarily an upper rectal growth uh, a small growth around 3 to 4 cm yeah so i would uh, judge it as a low to intermediate risk like upper rectal cancer nodes if it is positive i would put it as intermediate risk uh, and basically uh, upper rectal cancer no peritoneal involvement you uh, uh, the, the decision making would be between straight surgery and giving adjuvant chemo if you have positive nodes or you can give uh, a, sh- a short course rt and do an early surgery that is uh, early uh, surgery at one week So, that is what uh, we usually practice. Yes. My decision for giving uh, short, uh, my decision for giving short course RT would be if the mesorectal nodes look significant. Because if the mesorectal nodes are significant, there is still a chance of four percent of the lateral nodes being microscopically positive. So I would like to sterilize the lateral nodes by giving short course RT because uh, that is my uh, this thing to give short course RT. If I feel the nodes are significant, I would prefer short course RT and early surgery. If I if the nodes don't look significant, there's no MVI, and it's an intermediate to low risk. I would go for straight surgery, and if the final pathology shows a uh, node positive, I would give for uh, I, I would opt for. So, so if I say that uh, on MRI they reported like uh, uh, the nodes are significant, like uh, uh, on the basis of the MRI criteria for nodes. So would you like to give a new adjuvant uh, treatment to these patients, or would you like to go for an upfront surgery in such kind of scenarios where actually CRM is free? Uh, that's what i would err on the side to over treat by short course radiation early surgery i would ne- i would not opt for a long course chemo radiation i do and, short and the and the reason for giving uh, short course radiation and this lateral lateral uh, that is a uh, and, uh, internal uh, and operator okay mode. and uh, uh, when would you like to operate these patients like after short course would you like to operate them immediately or operate on the 10th day 
on the 10th day so no waiting period so you don't need any uh, down staging of these tumors but you would like to give short course radiation to these patients uh, just to sterilize the lateral nodes but however lateral nodes were negative as per the mri mri uh, uh, Doctor, i'm uh, asking for the microscope if the lateral node was mri was positive it's a high risk rectal cancer then i would go for uh, i would like to downstage it i would go i would give ray chemo radiation and wait lateral node once is positive it's a high risk rectal cancer okay this so we we'll take the other other surgeons view dr uh, dr shabnam is there on the panel uh, hello dr shabnam do you agree with the plan or means uh, would you like to do an upfront surgery in these patients uh, is there any room for upfront surgery uh, in these patients for this patient uh, it is um, fractured upper rectal tumor and if i don't have any other high risk features like any lvi is not there pni is not there and essentially smo uh, does recommend taking them uh, like or treating them like colonic uh, cancers for this patient if it is a good prognostic that is where the rumor comes in for the upfront process uh, new adjuvant if you're not having an emvi if you're not having any lateral rectal nodes uh, lateral pelvic nodes involved in this case and it is just good prognostic t3 a t3 b upper rectal tumor then i would go for an upfront surgery uh, only uh, recommendations for scrt or crt in the cases where you suspect that uh, the the quality of the tme will not be good so for me for this patient uh, it's an upfront surgery okay dr sumit your take on upfront surgery in, uh, in this these kind of scenarios upper rectum particularly uh, what is the practice at your institute yeah good evening say uh, uh, upper rectum cancers this is a t3a only nodes we don't know whether they are there or not and above the peritoneal reflection the disease is there so yes. it's going to surgeons calls first so surgeons are divided actually one surgeon wants new uh, joint radiation and other wants uh, upfront surgery so uh, if you can highlight we are going for short course patients yes. and if, if the indication for radiation usually, therapy over here we are thinking about the lateral, uh, pelvic so we can node. we can take radiation we can take dr garan sanis uh, uh, opinion also so dr garan can we avoid radiation in such kind of scenarios no we can uh, uh, hi uh, sorry if i were am i or yeah yes, so yes. i agree with i agree with dr deepak's uh, opinion here uh, the mri uh, is showing lymph nodes and uh, uh, you know the the original uh, research which has shown the benefit of radiation has not has not ruled out radiation therapy in upper rectal cancers of course we know with better understanding of local regional disease that yes uh, because above the peritoneal reflection the disease is simpler so yes we can avoid the long course rtct and we can give the short course rt i i i agree with dr deepak on that i would like to can i ask you dr manish that is this patient in any sort of uh, obstruction because the lumen seem to be obstructed no it lumen seems to be obstructed but he was not in obstruction Not in, not in, in fact, that is also one of the reasons why I'd like to go for short course RT because you know we do it and you know the surgery should be done fast because this is one scenario where uh, you know I, so, so, so that's so that's to answer Dr. Shankar's uh, concern that you know this is the reason for justifying uh, new adjuvant RT in this case. Uh, new adjuvant RT uh, here is an evidence based uh, uh, evidence based uh, decision. Uh, which no, we, we, we just I, want, I just want to know how adding new adjuvant radiation yes. uh, short course radiation particularly is going to uh, help in reducing local recurrence in such case scenarios where actually crm is free particularly upper rectum is there any evidence because nodes positivity in most of the most of the trials even general rectal cancer trial and other things they have not shown any uh, difference in survival Uh, particularly uh, after radiation and because node positivity per se is not an indication for so uh, most important indication is the uh, crm whether it is involved or not particularly the upper rectum means is there any data which suggests that node positivity in itself is an indication for adding new adjuvant radiation so uh, the the reason for adding new adjuvant radiation therapy uh, in a node positive case is the benefit that we saw in the original original research which dr tp sahu presented in his first five or seven slides uh, that that is that is the that is the fundamental thing and with with regards to your concern for the 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 crm threatened uh, that is that that makes it an indication for a long course rtct uh, I, i i i hope that is a, is a is a distinction we can make so long course rtct can be avoided agreed 
but short course rt uh, short course rt can still help uh, of course there can be a difference in approach and one tumor board may decide not to go for uh, uh, radiotherapy and that there would be some justification for it and uh, dr rahul what is your take on this uh, uh, for adding radiation as an urgent so, treatment so, so i must congratulate you for bringing such a controversial case uh, to the front but you know this is a very really a borderline situation and uh, you know uh, if you see upper rectal uh, uh, cancer guidelines also they are quite divided especially rectal sigmoid and the upper rectum part uh, especially in this kind of patient so 3b uh, is okay because people will be very fair to go ahead with ctrt up front and even otherwise all large randomized trials for c rectum new adjuvant uh, radiotherapy they have not shown improvement of local uh, control rates wherever they have reported in the upper rectal cancers with radiotherapy so it uh, overall survival to anyway in the total cohort was not there but when we talk about local control rate they were not shown significantly improved in the upper rectum with all the clinical trials so it remains very controversial because surgeon has to be comfortable they need to be have <clears throat> having surgery now coming to the lymph node reason uh you know the lateral lymph nodes uh, is still a very controversial topic whether to go for uh, whether we are covering it consistently in all guidelines uh, with radiation dose whether um, the surgeons are operating those nodes and what is the exact location about, what the surgeon and radiologist and radiation oncologist uh, call them as so i think to make it shorter uh, it depends totally on the multidisciplinary some- board how to go ahead Uh, in our center, generally we would not, uh, you know, go for radiation for the, these patients. But if there is T three B or a bulky tumor, we would go for new adjuvant radiotherapy. Okay. So Dr. Nikhil wants to add something. I think he raised his hand. Yes. Uh, so Manish, basically, uh, see what I can see from uh, Dr. Deepak's and Dr. Gagan's discussion is that uh, they would want to add short course RT here. now it's the decision of adding a uh, an additional modality of treatment whether it's short course or long course now when we are adding a modality then we should have a good data to support that modality so currently what data we have that doesn't support use of any additional modality in these patients they should go for upfront surgery and to support this there was recent trial published uh, there was ocum trial right so it not only included the uh, upper rectal cancers it also oh, included no, no, no. middle rectal cancers and it was a large series and yeah. in which the so surgeons then, showed that patients in the whom there was like uh, crm was free like and uh, the tumor was limited to meso rectum yeah, uh, even with no positivity they showed a very low recurrence rate comparable to the got, current standard yeah. uh, without giving upfront or new adjuvant That's rt good. in these exactly. patients so considering so we, all these factors i i would be very very uh, uh, opposed to giving rt to these patients uh, like i don't see a difference between short course and long course like if you are adding a modality so then be it short course or long course uh, it doesn't make much difference uh nikhil just for completion i would add back uh nikhil i'm audible yes yes you're audible yeah 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 it's the see it's a bulky lesion it's just getting onto the mid rectum i think it will be palpable pr it's, it's i i i am very well fine with straight surgery because there are two issues if it finally comes to be a t3b or a t3a but n2 uh, n2b nodes more than four nodes positive then what would be the adjuvant adju- adju- that's one question so that's that's uh, then that's we one question and so second part is the possibility of a lateral microscopic i'm not saying matter if it's seen in the microscope it's if a microscopic bulky upper rectal tumors according to the japanese guidelines have a 4% risk of microscopic disease in the lateral nodes that has to be tackled by chemotherapy if you give short course that nodes get sterilized or else you do for such tumors you should do a straight surgery with bilateral lateral lymphadenectomy there is no, uh, deepak ji when, when you uh, make such statements like it has to be based on the probability so like you have to look into the data what was my local recurrence rate what was caused by so let's let's come to let's come to like, the like, this ocum thing that so you are telling is about new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy and new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy in particular is you know the long course ctrt so this is about the short course uh, rt that we are both talking about so i mean so, so i add a modality when it's not going to 
Uh, but but uh, uh, you know there are there are lymph nodes over there. So uh, you know uh, I think I that's don't know what the Deepak was saying or who was saying uh, that if there if, if uh, multiple multiple nodes come out as positive, then you will send the patient for adjuvant uh, okay. RTCT. So that's what that's. So, um, Gagan, no, I, I totally understand that. But then uh, when you take a call on giving an uh, additional modality it's based on the probability distribution. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. if you yeah. operate such patients based on the MRI, what is the probability of these patients receiving adjuvant chemo uh, chemo radiation or radiation? So, that <laughs> probability, if you can, in which case, in which case, Doctor Nikhil, then so we should do that MRI with the proper uh, angling and orientation, so that we are very sure in the beginning that this is not yes, a definitely. So, so, so that MRI, this, MRI you have to. This I think Doctor Nikhil, this can go both ways. This can go multiple ways. ways. This let uh, let yes, ask our panelist, Dr. Shabnam can answer because she decided to operate this patient as an upfront as an upfront surgery she wants to do. So, what are the things on MR actually which helps you to decide which patient should undergo upfront surgery? If you can uh, uh, enumerate these uh, things as per the ESMO guidelines, means you mentioned about the ESMO guidelines. If you can mention some of the things which you will see particularly on MR uh, for upfront surgery candidates. Uh, so, Dr. Nittal, um, MRI has had a very huge role in deciding and prognosticating the diseases and, uh, you know, decision-making in the MDTs. When we talk about the role of MRI, we are basically dividing these cancer, rectal cancers, into good prognostication and bad prognostic diseases. So, with good prognostic or earlier ones would be TA, TB, and the bad ones would be T3, uh, C, and D. So, um, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah, please. And the second thing that I would want to look at would be the CIM, obviously, whether my resection, circumcision, resection margin is going to be free or not. The third thing that I would want to look at would be the lateral pelvic nodes. The other thing would be the number of the mesorectal uh, nodes involved, the size, uh, the shape, the heterogeneity. Uh, even in, in upper rectal uh, tumors, up to N2 even, if, if uh, you know, rest of the features are not there, um, I can go ahead with upfront surgery. The third thing would be uh, looking at EMVI. Uh, essentially, EMVI is basically an in-transit metastasis. So if it is an uh, EMVI, then I have to take a call on radiation as well as chemotherapy for these patients. So, um, and so then- what, um, uh, Just I want to ask you, what do you mean by uh, free CRM means? Uh, is it only that T3, A, B, C, D, or if it's like node which is near to- and uh, looking into the nodes, if they are not, uh, you know, uh, whether it is the disease or it is the nodal uh, status. That right. is so actually, so uh, Dr. Gagan was asking actually, means what things uh, you would like to see. I think the message is very clear, like CRM free means if you have even nodes positivity. Yes, so node it positivity if it is away from out. CRM. So uh, then it is considered to be intramesorectal nodes. And it is not going. So coming to uh, coming to Dr. Deepak, I think. So if we suppose offer a surgery to these patients, upfront surgery to these patients, as we know, these are the indications as per the ESMO guidelines. Again, node positivity CN1 if high tumor is again a controversial thing because that is not proven in most of the trial that node positivity is uh, is an in indication particular for mid and lower rectal also for an upfront neurogen chemo radiation yes but as per esmo guidelines as per uh, dr shabnam has told these are the indications for upfront surgery so how do you means how do you ensure that the uh, the quality of surgery because one limitation which is always placed uh, in such guidelines is to ensure the quality of your TME. So how do you ensure uh, a good quality of surgery uh, whenever we are offering uh, an upfront surgery to these patients? Dr. Manish, uh, Dr. Sawyer, I just wanted one clarification. Yes, yes, please. Just can you go back to one slide, please? Yeah. Yeah. So so, so are we telling that in the upper rectum, I also heard Dr. Sharman tell you N2 also she would like to operate. And if I look across the trials, they have taken up to 15 centimeters, which we expect is the upper rectum also so if they have done that and they have told if i look if i look in the porridge mr criteria because all yes. of them have assessed the mr and endoscopic usg they have told very clearly if it is more than nine millimeters they've taken it as positive on mr if it is for five to nine millimeters they have taken two out of the three criteria which one would be irregular size of the lymph node one would be a heterogeneous enhancement Correct. and third would be a round round structure of the lymph node if two of the three were there, they considered to be uh, N1 clinically. And these patients so, would be eligible for a new approach. So, so what N2, I'm getting of the discussion is if it's upper rectum, 
the approach is only surgery even if it's n2 and then we think about an adjuvant so n2 or n1 uh, mainly uh, on the basis of the number of the nodes which are involved actually uh, and no, the, no i have come to a very basic question because so, all the data which yes, you are showing on on the basis of mr the nodes which are appearing to be significant as per the size as per the other characteristic features which you have mentioned yes the uh, Pro, uh, prodige and uh, rapido trial have taken node positive disease as a high risk group Yes. And uh, uh, yes, but uh, most of the previous studies, they could not find any. Uh, uh, they could not find any survival difference in node positive or when they uh, did a subgroup analysis of node negative and node positive patients, they could not find find any survival difference between so, these. So to be fair to Dr. Gagan, in the Dutch TME, if you look into the subgroup which I mentioned, the yes. stage three which had the node positive was statistically significant even on the. subgroup analysis which also was positive for test of heterogeneity also and that was also significant so my, my point i'm i'm learning because see, it's a surgeon feel at the end of the when they don't feel that way we come into the picture but the if it is upper rectum is it the data which is the message going out the irrespective of nodal status i would like to operate so it is I not mean, like I, can you clarify on that as a moderator so that mm -hmm. needs to be now for cleared before we move ahead so i think that question can be uh, means dr shabnam if you can answer this means uh, irrespective of the nodal numbers actually uh, nodal status actually uh, can upfront surgery is always an option or and and, and is it the evidence today uh, with this two trials coming in now um i think we uh, for the upper rectal tumors you know we have, we're not discussing with the lower rectal tumors over here for the upper rectal tumors if it is a good prognostic disease and there is no lbi no mvi uh, no pni i would still go for uh, an upfront surgery if so, Dr. Shabnam, all the trials both of them had 25 to 30% upper rectum point number 1 and they took node positive n1 on the criteria of mr to be high risk um if we if you look at the whole thing sir if uh, if you're discussing see if the guidelines say n1 and n3 personally uh, if you ask me um i don't uh, you know i don't have um probably a justification to fit in uh, an n1 disease up to n2 disease which is one node up to more than seven nodes in one uh, category but as per smo guidelines they have put it in um, intermediate group and that is what is recommended and the recommendations for scrt and crt are only if you think that your you know the quality of the tm is not going to be really good and um taking upper rectal as uh, you know equivalent or almost similar behaving as colonic uh, cancers then um, i don't think we we have solid or robust evidence or level one evidence saying that uh, you you should add C, um, crt or scrt to these patients Uh, changing any overall survival so extending extending dr sahu's ex uh, argument uh, uh, dr shabnam and dr manish and dr nikhil uh, the submission here is that this is this is a situation which is truly gray and as someone was pointing out that this is just just knocking on the low, uh, middle uh, one third as well uh, and you know the the point the point of the matter is that in in lymph node positive disease there is a benefit of new adjuvant treatment which in fact the, the, the these two trials which were la uh, discussed at last were also showing so why why should we so, be so categorical in removing it just because yeah uh, the it's not just the quality of tme there is some survival benefit of new adjuvant treatment so uh, doing a short course rt would only benefit the patient so I, you, you have a point you ha you do have a point but sometimes there is not not always a robust evidence for something uh, we we don't have robust evidence against it as well so, so but, there, there is some gray area there isn't it it's I it's the the area, but make one, one point this gray area, area we have a lot of evidence now in the form of a, a trial which dr nikhil mentioned open trial which has actually only which has taken uh, only crm positivity as only different as only difference between the two groups so nodes positive and nodes negative patients are equally divided among all be between the two groups and they could not find any difference in survival in both of the groups so there are there are there is a lot of evidence where they say that only node positivity in upper rectal cancers particularly and mid rectal cancers should not be a criteria for giving new adjuvant radiation yes if you have to add new adjuvant treatment then these node positivity in itself is a risk factor for systemic failure as which which actually is addressed by rapido and prodige study so these becomes a strong point, strong point for adding new adjuvant 
chemotherapy in addition to radiation short course radiation immediate surgery i don't think it's going to solve any purpose by reducing the local recurrence this is what is uh, yes one one point should go out loud and clear here that in such cases if you are planning upfront surgery one you have to be very good with your mr it has to be a very good mr and you should be very diligent in reading the mr right second point that's your true. quality of tme has to be excellent so that, that's that's what i want to stress dr deepak if we if we are doing upfront surgery for these patients or maybe node negative patient as per your uh, understanding of this uh, this thing if it is a t3 a lesion node negative upper rectum if you are doing upfront surgery so then how do you ensure a good quality means uh, we know the grading system of tme so uh, is it means like practice uh very often uh, at most of the centers or it like a thing which is there in trials only so what is your take on this i will play devil devil advocate uh, regarding the node uh, dr sahu told about uh, nodes the three criteria uh, the three criteria in spite of these criteria the sensitivity for nodes in mri is around 60 percentage so don't be surprised that final hp would be a t3 a b n0 disease so upfront i am not against upfront surgery and upfront good tme has uh, has have already has, has been proven so uh, a good tme surgery would may suffice but as nikhil told it's a probability the fight ten for probability of local recurrence is what i am concerned of uh, so i i'll go to the next question uh, yes a uh, good tme surgery is the conventional heels you should be operating in the heels plane and you should have a grade 1 mesorectum with intact uh, the mesorectal fat should be intact all around the specimen and ideally you should uh, the european says you should take a photograph and you should paint the specimen uh, before sending it to the pathology you should paint it with indian ink or any uh, this thing before sending it to the this thing so uh, this is another limitation actually because most of the guidelines which says which uh, uh, say uh, talk about upfront surgery then they also talk about like the uh, surgeons uh, should ensure a good quality tme by actually photograph their specimen pathologists should photograph their specimen and they can analyze they can assess their quality of tme uh, so this is another limitation this is another uh, point which should be very clear that good quality tme where there should not be any breach in the mesorectum is a uh, uh, pr uh, primary thing which is required if we are doing an upfront surgery so dr uh, 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 so dr rahul uh, if we suppose do upfront surgery for these patients uh, uh, what are the indications of uh, adjuvant radiation actually uh, means uh, we get a final biopsy report uh how do we decide that this patient uh, suppose this patient comes out to be a same which like t3 and two disease three nodes were found to be significant so uh, how do you decide about adjuvant radiation in these kinds of patients what are the indications uh, of adjuvant radiation so see ideally uh, we would not not like to land up in a situation when we have to you know uh, treat a node uh, yes. you know adjuvant hello i think we lost him margin positivity or crm positivity with emvi those all things will be also considered so we could not hear you actually because your we lost you in between so can you please repeat hello dr rahul yeah, yeah sorry sorry yeah yeah no my uh, actually electricity connection is gone going fluctuating so internet connection is also fluctuate yeah so basically it is uh, if you have nodal positivity disease with which is a lateral pelvic nodes positive or uh, large mesorectal nodes which are more than 3 or 4 uh, mm -hmm. those are the real indications where nodal burden of the disease no no so dr rahul the, the question is very uh, clear for this patient only where we don't consider lateral pelvic lymph nodes as significant on mr so we are not going to remove uh, in upfront surgery so final report comes out to be t3 and 2 disease uh, the three nodes which we were uh, we seeing on mr were found to be positive so how will you decide the further treatment course will you add radiation or just chemotherapy is enough
So for N, for N2 disease, uh, I think we should go ahead with the adjuvant radiotherapy because it, it would benefit N2 B disease. Okay. Uh, and Dr. Sumit, uh, Dr. Sumit Goel. Yes. So uh, what will be your adjuvant uh, treatment protocol for such kind of patients? Where T3 N2 disease, three nodes positive out of 12 nodes and uh, all margins are clear, CRM is free and uh, no EMV, no LVI, no PNI. So what kind of, so how will you decide about adjuvant treatment? It is going to be adjuvant chemotherapy or adjuvant chemo, uh, chemotherapy with radiation therapy. See, as far as I'm concerned, if it is N2, node positive disease is there, definitely at some point of time, I want my radiation oncologist to add radiation. But the thing is, the sequencing, to when to add the timing is important. So chemo, no doubt about it, definitely chemotherapy will be there and I will be preferring the oxaliplatin based chemotherapy, maybe Qualpox is the first preference, but the question is about the timing. So it is a multimodality discussion, so we need to sit and discuss with the surgeons also, how compatible are they for allowing us to give radiation post-surgery. Dr. Sahu, your, your take on this? Uh, Only. I uh, I would uh, I would add towards giving a concurrent chemo radiotherapy for two reasons. I do not one trial, although very uh, uh, very old trial, does not have the protocol which we use today, which I showed in the first uh, uh, slide. It does show that a concurrent approach is better than a single agent approach. Mm -hmm. Point number one. So in an N two and with the nodes three nodes positive, mm -hmm. I would go for a. Uh, Chemo radiotherapy, especially for this patient on discussion, because it was the upper going into the middle one third of rectum. I would involve the radiation oncologist, and my chemotherapy would be a Falfox, uh, and I would give a concurrent capsidabin with my radiation. Uh, and uh, the main reason uh, for giving adding radiation is the local regional weakness, I think. Yes, yes, definitely local regional side because the two areas of concern in a rectum would be 10 to 15 percent of local regional. Uh, recurrence and uh, distant meds and I think a combined approach would be the way I would treat if it's come to my okay. so as even far... for the lateral pelvic nodes also I suppose because if you're not going to and uh, you know interest them five to ten percent will be their risk you know uh, if there is an N2 disease okay so radiation will so, help in that uh, if we go as per the evidence like uh, there uh, this is defined very clearly by ESMO guidelines there are some sufficient and necessary criteria, and there are some insufficient and unnecessary things. In sufficient and necessary, what they say is the CRM is the most important thing, which should be more than, uh, which if it is less than or equal to one mm, then it is definitely an indication for adjuvant radiation where patients has undergone upfront surgery. PT4B, which is uh, another indication, PN2 extra capsular caps spread close to MRF. So pathologists have to mention whether the node was near to MRF or not, I think, which is difficult to um, uh, uh, analyze. Uh, I don't know at how many centers this, this information is available, whether the node is near to MRF or it is away from the MRF. Extranodal deposits, PN2, a poor mesorectal quality or defects. This is another, another point which we have to consider because uh, breach in mesorectal, fasci uh, mesorectal fascia and the quality of TME is not routinely uh, analyzed at most of the centers. So uh, if we are not giving neoadjuvant radiation and uh, uh, then, then this, this becomes the sufficient and necessary criteria for adding adjuvant radiation. So coming to- In fact, uh, yeah. uh, since you are concluding Dr. Manish this case, this yeah, exact please. reason uh, of uh, inavailability of data uh, from the histopathology that, uh, you know, this N2 is close to MRF or not is the reason why we need a very good quality MRI where the, where the, uh, where the cuts it, are taken, where the angles are taken. Very well taken. Yeah. So yeah. see, otherwise, uh, on, otherwise we, we, we must err on the side of caution. Definitely, definitely. With, uh, if uh, on MR node is very near to MRF, then definitely these patients are, are candidate for a new joint radiation. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Sumit is raising hand. Yes, Dr. Sumit, I, uh, you want to say something. Dr. Jan, I'm asking you, so if we have to incorporate radiation, when yes. is the right time to incorporate the radiation in such a scenario? Would you prefer us to give us four cycles of chemotherapy or some chemotherapy, then CTRT, then chemotherapy, or you will be comfortable giving radiation directly after surgery? So, uh, 
So you are asking me? No, no, Doctor. I am asking. Can you ask Doctor Gagan? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah Doctor Gagan, can you take this question? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, there is a there is a heterogeneity in approach. You know, chemotherapy followed by RT CT or RT CT followed by chemotherapy. If there are these multiple nodes positive, four or more lymph nodes positive, then perhaps I would err on the side of giving chemo first followed by RT. That's what I would, uh, you know. So, sir, just a few point in this, Doctor Shabnam, uh, uh, do you agree with this thing, or uh, do you agree? Actually, agree with the whole plan of adding radiation, or means, uh, or if we have to uh, add as, radiation. As, then... as as Doctor Samhu has also pointed out, it's going to be an MDT, and we have to take everything into account, uh, including the age of this patient, also probably sometimes. Uh, but if I have to chemo, or there is no doubt about the chemotherapy for radiation. Um, probably I would go for radiation if it is a uh, the uh, you know N two disease with ex, uh, extranodal extension or PNI, or if if the patient is having N one C or any satellite uh, you know lesions within the MRF. Probably I would err towards RT in this case uh, only then. Okay, and uh, when would you like to add radiation in the treatment? Is it means immediately after surgery or after four cycles of chemotherapy? Uh, that call probably the MDT will take. Um, so MD, it's purely a surgeon's call actually because how much you are comfortable with your enhancement? I, I need three weeks, minimum three weeks time for healing of the tissues and, uh, before they go for the So I think Dr. Sumit, uh, uh, I think the uh, most of the uh, most of us uh, wants to start with chemotherapy and sandwich, sandwich radiation and then complete the chemotherapy. Uh, where does the evidence come from for this approach? So there is no there is no evidence. Yeah. So 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 there is evidence for all the trials of tone a long course radiotherapy that's a fifty and with a boost as the radiation oncologists give post op with the capsidabine followed by eight cycle of Falcox. Uh, this would be a standard uh, way to go. And uh, if I do a sandwiching way, uh, I am not sure. Uh, if, uh, can we do this without any form of evidence? I don't know. Actually, I agree with Dr. Gagan. It is a very heterogeneous subgroup of diseases and we need to, we need to individualize each and every patient. We cannot say that this is what we no, do. I, I agree, Dr. Sumit. Can, do we have one trial even of a sandwiching? No, sir. Study wise, we don't know. Sometimes the toxic, the potential, as Dr. Manish said, sometimes the surgeon is not comfortable with the surgery uh, and uh, with the, with the, uh, they have always have this fear ki whether they will have more post operative complications, they want more time for healing. So that's where probably the chemotherapy. No, 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 Dr. Sumit, what Dr. Sao is saying is that why should we sandwich? If we are starting with chemo complete and then give radiation, I mean, where does sandwiching uh, no, no, coming no. from? I think that's what is the point. That is a fair thing. Yes, that we can do. I think that's what is what he's saying. Either, you know, we go for RTCT followed by chemotherapy. Perhaps that's a good way of doing it. Or suppose we want to treat it like colon, like we have initially discussed. Fair enough. Go for chemo followed by RT. Dr. Sumit, why are you why are you sounding so distant to all of us? I'm it's never a problem. Yes, good bye. Nasdik, I don't know. I'm not sure. 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 i a uh, surgery for these patients with a good quality of TME and there is no other risk factors and you are just adding radiation to reduce the local recurrence because of node positivity. So then I think distant recurrence is of more importance rather than local recurrence because already patient has undergone a surgery and upper rectum as we know is mostly treated like a colon cancer. And it's uh, mostly uh, it should be take, treated as a colon cancer. So, uh, so chemotherapy, because if we start using long course radiation in these kind of scenarios, so we are again delaying the chemotherapy uh, for another uh, uh, for another six weeks at so least. We are giving capsidavir. Uh, so we can discuss. I agree to all the discussion, but anyway, we are giving capsidavir. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, even in the most of the guidelines of chemotherapy, capsidavir is also option, although Falfox is better. So we can argue on this, but I think uh, the point is well made. Right. right. So I think we can now take on our next case, which will actually open up few few of the other uh, discussion points. 
So this is a 62-year-old lady with the comorbidities of diabetes, hypertension, with good performance status, presented again with bleeding per rectum, tenesmus for two months, evaluated. There was a growth in rectum, 8 to 9 centimeter. It was basically mid-lower rectal growth, biopsy, moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma. Uh, so this was mid and lower rectal growth. On MRI, this was 4 centimeter from anal verge. T3B, mesorectal nodes were positive. EMVI was negative, CRM was free, there was no lateral lymph nodes. And uh, levator NI was free, and uh, we can see internal swinter, interswintric plane, external swinter, all were free, but the lower margin of the tumor was 4 cm. So other investigation, CA was 8, CT chest abdomen was normal. And so Dr. Shabnam, again, pro uh, we start with the surgeon, how will you manage this patient? What, should, what will be your treatment plan at, at your center? for these kind of patients, mid and lower rectal growth, locally advanced? Mid, yeah, it's locally advanced mid rectal growth. So um, obviously I would go for a new adjuvant plan first uh, rather than an upfront surgery for this patient. So where, wherever indications for new adjuvant, especially for the new, uh, new adjuvant RT, it's better to give RT, uh, you know, pre-op rather than post-op and we have uh, enough data. Uh, suggestive of that. So for this one, since uh, still uh, MRF is not, uh, the CRM is not threatened, the elevators are not involved, I would probably uh, go for a uh, short post radiation therapy uh, followed by uh, chemo as was the, uh, the, the you know design of the Rapido and then wait uh, for uh, 10 to 12 weeks and then do the surgery. And, uh, for the surgery. Okay, and what will be your uh, take on swinter preservation in such kind of patients? It's it's, uh, it's still four centimeters away even uh, before my uh, you know um, new adjuvant. Uh, obviously, the assessment after that, but I think uh, sphincter preservation will not be an issue in this patient. Hopefully, should not be an issue. But you assess on uh, uh, the previous MR or the MR which is done after new adjuvant uh, chemo. After, uh, after new adjuvant. Okay. So, and Dr. Deepak, how do you assess these patients for sphincter preservation? Uh, and do you agree? Actually, agree with new adjuvant chemo radiation plan, or uh, your plan is slightly different? Uh, I just, uh, our, our institution only pro practices short course RT. We don't practice long course RT since five years. Okay. So we, we always look in the high risk we give, short course followed by three chemo and do delayed surgery. So basically there should be delay to downstage for winter preparation. Primarily by MRI, this looks like a mucinous tumor and it's low, lower down. The intersphincteric space is free. For upfront MRI, the intersphincteric or the external sphincteric involved, not for sphincter surgery. Otherwise, this candidate definitely is a candidate for sphincter preservation. What our protocol will be short course, even though it's a mucinous tumor, I would give like I would give uh, in during the waiting period, I would give four cycles of Polpox and operate either an ultra low or a intersphincter resection on 10th or 11th week. So, so, uh, so you will give four cycles of uh, chemotherapy after yeah. short course radiation. In the waiting delay, I would delay. I would not uh, operate uh, short course. So during the waiting during waiting period, you would like to add chemotherapy four cycles. But uh, Dr. Sahu, uh, means uh, like uh, you mentioned about Rapido trial. And so it seems that both surgeons are favoring the trial, but one is mentioning about four cycles. But what should be the ideal uh, yeah, two, way of going about Now I take the OPAM also, which we really depended in the last case. For as per open, this is high risk. Yes. That's very clear. So okay. if it is a high risk, it is not radiotherapy, it's chemo radiotherapy. So I have two approaches. Either I go for a chemo radiotherapy concurrent and then follow it up with a new adjuvant, the total new adjuvant approach as we did that. Or I, I totally don't get this point of going for a short course and just going for three to four cycles of chemo. If it is has to be chemo, it has to be six cycles of KPOX or eight to nine cycles of fall forms. It cannot be three to four cycles of fall forms. Then we are neither here, neither there. So I would uh, suggest that if I am in the multitude disciplinary, I'll, I'll I will uh, prevail over my surgical colleagues that if you are doing a short course and doing the rapido way, we have to follow for the six cycles of CAPOX or at least eight to nine cycles of fall fox, then assess it on MR and do and go ahead with the surgery. And then we can look up to, as per the SPR report. Otherwise, the other approach would be the porridge, go for folfirinox, and then go for a concurrent chemoradiotherapy. Both are looking good to me. I think this should be one of the approach in this case. Okay, so Dr. Gagan, means uh, uh, any indication for adding long course radiation in these kind of scenarios? 
so do you think long course is better over short course for these kind of patients well long course radio chemotherapy has been uh, you know the mainstay of treatment since a long time recently uh, in, in in many recent years and many of you surgeons must have been doing that for your high risk patients so there is certainly a element of comfort with the response that long course chemo radiotherapy gives to the surgeon in terms of the response before surgery and uh, uh, but but then of course short course uh, radiotherapy is also good uh, in so far as uh, adding chemotherapy is concerned uh, which uh, brings me a little bit uh, to uh, one point that i have about rapido is that what essentially rapido uh, the the new adjuvant the tnt approach in rapido is doing is is compensating for the long course radio chemotherapy essentially because if you really look at the the the, the flow of the uh, yes. trial if you really look at it because half the patients did not even receive the adjuvant chemotherapy in 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 the rapido arm where they received long course rdct so uh, so i, I anyway you have to find a place for long course radiation actually means is there any place for long course radiation yeah, there, is, there is because long course radio chemotherapy is going to give you a better sphincter preservation a sphincter preservation we can't get so carried away by the rapido data we already know that we have rtog data where we have a better sphincter preservation and so when that is a concern uh, we should go for it yeah so yes. dr sahu your take on your take on sphincter preservation rates if we compare tnt versus standard conventional long course chemo radiation i i i i i would probably go for the porridge date way i am not going for the rapido because i feel that the, the role of adjuvant chemo is already controversial and there is although with all this lacuni with the 3 year survival a longer survival comes at 5 6 years we would all be changing practice so if it is folforinox i would then go for a long course radiotherapy with capsitabine and that's what probably i will do if given a choice So, But if doctor, someone wants to follow the rapido, it's fair because there are only two data is available on the uh, internet on the literature which supports this approach. Uh, so doctor Rahul, your so, take? Yeah, so for you know that's what even I asked Doctor Sahu in when he finished his slides. You know, so uh, as of both Porridge and uh, your rapido trial, we don't know any subset which would preferentially benefit more with one type of radiation treatment right. over the other. now uh, coming to dr saini's point which i little bit agree but again there is no much of evidence but there is much more level of comfort both for radiation oncologists as well as surgeon specifically so can, for the lower can, uh, specify that comfort actually means so what are I'm the you, so ha huh, i'm just coming to that so hmm. the lower rectal tumors where we are expectant of sphincter preservation so as a radiation uh, oncologist there is much more data to know how to do a boost or how to do a follow up or how to you know put them in wait and watch scheme uh, the data is lacking in short course or uh, you know rapid kind of uh, study and you know there is a dif specific difference between local control versus path cr versus clinical control rate for wait and watch the criteria that is followed and they are not directly similar or you know obvious from one to the other so that is why whenever patient is expectant for wait and watch technique you prefer long course even at our center but otherwise in this kind of a tumor situation we do not now coming for the sphincter for the surgeon comfort i as what my colleagues tell in my center they do find it easy to operate after long course 6 to 8 weeks rather than a short course followed by 6 to 8 cycles of chemotherapy operating okay but uh, as per the uh, if i can bring in some data uh, from the recent meta analysis which is there uh, to compare tnt versus standard long course uh, chemo radiation followed by surgery followed by adjuvant particularly the sphincter preservation rate actually these studies uh, they, uh, this is a forest uh, plot and there is no difference actually they is could find the jama is this from the jama jama to understand but if i yeah. want to boost the dose to increase the chances of sphincter preservation for wait and watch specifically the kind of population see if you see majority of the lower rectal tumor patients in our center 30% will default surgery all the uh, wait and watch principles are basically driven by patient needs they are not driven by radiation oncologists or surgical oncologists and uh, unlike any other site they will never be a randomized trial to do that actually so, so that you know, so that uh, so, can so be can it be given along with tnt means particularly if you are following uh, porridge or so that's what i'm saying the data for tnt boosting radiation or other things and expecting you know uh, wait and watch uh, much more successful is less uh, because it's just a recent thing 
Whereas for long course, we have larger amount of data to suggest how we can boost with brachytherapy or papillor technique or other techniques to improve the you know, uh, clinical control rates for having a more successful weight and watch chances. So that is what my comfort as a radiation oncologist for the lower rectal tumors involving sphincter is. Uh, but yeah, for the surgeons, I, as I said, I, I think other surgeons can elaborate when they have to operate specifically in the sphincter area or intrasphincteric area after short course versus long course, what is their comfort? If I add something, uh, we have been recruiting 20, we finished 28 uh, patients, completed treatment with TNT protocol for uh, high risk rectal uh, cancers. And uh, if you're considering uh, ultra lower and intersphincteric, doing it after six months is not good. The results are not good. So if you if it's a low rectal cancer, you want to do intersphincteric, it's best, best to operate at 10th week. So TNT, I would be afraid to give in uh, uh, the mucinous type also where you don't find exactly mucinous uh, regression with MRI. So mucinous, I don't know whether chemo plays a role. Giving long-term chemo doesn't play a role. So for mucinous tumors and for patients who are for intersphincter resection, I would rather operate at 10th week. Be it long course RT or short course with four cycles. That's the justification for giving four cycles of chemotherapy. That is... If he's going for surgery, I would prefer him to operate at 10th week and not at after six months. Uh, uh, the problem of uh, sphincter is more if you delay. Though, and uh, if I criticize uh, Rapido, you can see the data less than 30 percentage belong to distal. Most of them are upper and middle rectal. And the APR rates were around 30 percent had APR in the Rapido trial. So that uh, the proportion of distal rectal tumors in uh, Rapido is less and their APR rates were more. So I think sphincter preservation would be always be a, a, a negative factor for the TNT approach. So sphincter preservation, uh, as you told, maybe uh, if we are giving boost to tumor, uh, local tumor, maybe a sphincter preservation may be better. We don't have data if we compare to TNT, but yes, latest evidence does not support does not uh, support this viewpoint. However, definitely distant failure rates. If we compare in Rapido and if we compare uh, the local failure rates also in Rapido, so local failure rates are comparable and distant failure rates are definitely uh, less as compared to uh, the conventional approach. So Just to add on a lighter note, sorry, if you have a minute. Yes, so yes. at our center, uh, our surgeons were very convinced, uh, you know, that short course RT uh, followed by chemo, followed by, you know, surgery is very difficult for them. Uh, so they did a quality of life data comparison for both uh, sets of patients of, uh, you know, uh, who were short course followed by surgery in lower rectum uh, and versus the long course followed by uh, surgery. Both had key, uh, like short course had adequate amount of chemo, TNT approach. And the quality of life data was not different. Last uh, objectives were also not different, but quality of life of surgeon was poorer in the OR. So that is what we generally joke about. But yeah, we are testing it now prospectively for the same thing. Okay. Uh, so, Doctor... If I can chip in. Um, yeah, I mean, please, when we please, were looking please. at uh, uh, specifically SCRT in this patient and not long course was because we, we, we have seen MRI. It is the uh, intersphincteric space is absolutely clear and uh, the CRM is not threatened. And uh, it is essentially a mid uh, encroaching a lower uh, rectum um, with four still clear even before we have started planning the new adjuvant. So um, I don't think uh, the distal margin is going to be any issue, uh, even you know uh, before the. Uh, so Doctor, uh, Doctor Shabnam, it is one so, always a controversy here. Actually, means see deciding of intersphin means deciding about the type of surgery, intersphincteric sections particularly, and uh, so yeah, very low. It's, it's, it's actually should be based on the MR which is done before uh, uh, before your new joint uh, treatment. Because if intersphincteric plane or levator NI is involved in uh, and in uh, before your before starting your new joint treatment, so I don't know how how comfortable uh, means uh, you are to do intersphincteric section if even if there is a complete pathological response after new joint treatment. So uh, the plane of surgeries and the extent of surgeries ideally should be decided on the pre new joint chemo radiation MR. So. Uh, if I have to add a point here, if that question arises if your intersphincteric space has been breached, uh, you know, upfront it was breached. 
and then you, you, you have, it's very difficult to decide between desmoplastic reaction and uh, involvement of that and then you won't be com comfortable probably doing that but if it was upfront clear and i don't have any uh, anything on my you know core biopsy saying that it is mucinous it is moderately differentiated as per i mean we are we are discussing this particular case over yes, here yes yes so, so uh, in this patient so it is not yes. differentiated sphincter is clear levators are not involved yes. lateral node is not there 4 cm of distal margin then I think we have, you know, data from Rapido, which so does say that there is 28% of uh, your uh, PCR as well as increased DFS in these patients vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the uh, conventional treatment. And um, I, we know that a better PCR does, uh, is, is, is a surrogate marker and does, you know, translate into better survival in these patients. So that's, so what, has been that's, been shown, shown. that's what has been shown in most of the trials. Uh, for TNT, that PCR rate is higher as compared to, to the conventional uh, long course chemo radiation. Mm -hmm. And so, so, Dr. Nikhil, I think uh, some of the uh, there are some questions. I think we can take these questions as well in between if you can, because I cannot see uh, the questions. I, I uh, have seen these questions, Dr. Manish, and uh, we are trying to answer those questions in the chat box only. Okay, right, so right. And, with and the if you can please uh, ask, allow some, because some few people are even raising the hands. So I don't know who, who wants to speak. So if you can allow. Uh, right. Smith wants to say something. Yeah, if someone wants to say something, please uh, can, can add something. I think if Dr. Nikhil wants to say Sumit yeah. and then Dr. Nikhil. So there are two, three points I want to make. One, uh, what Dr. Dilip said, uh, Dr. Deepak said uh, from MBR, we are doing the same. We are mostly doing short course radiation now with law, with the uh, delay in between. We give four cycles of chemotherapy and we reassess every two months. That is every four cycles. And our results have been good, tolerance is very good, and the pathological CR rate is quite good. We have not done formal analysis. I think Dr. Sarupa has already published uh, their paper in short form, and pathological response is very good. So, uh, saying, by saying that, the second thing is we know there is no optimal new advent schedule. And there, and second thing which comes into place, we don't know what is the optimal timing of surgery, surgery after short course radiation. The delay causes more pathological responses to come. That is the only thing. Otherwise, the rates of sphincter preservation versus the toxicity, everything more or less is the same. So that is my take so on So that's very important point actually. That's very important point. And uh, the, point, the point is very well taken uh, that swinter preservation is to be decided on. Uh, first thing is the MR which is done before deciding your new adjuvant protocol, whether we can actually, because the lesion which is actually involving the NL canal, we cannot preserve the swinter even if it is, there is a complete pathological response. We cannot, so that, that idea of giving long course radiation and boosting the tumor in order to preserve the swinter where actually the swinter is involved uh, is not very well taken. And the main idea of adding new adjuvant treatment to such patients is to reduce the local recurrence as well as to reduce the systemic recurrence, which is, uh, which is as high as 30%. So for that matter, uh, we have seen that, uh, as Dr. Sahu mentioned in his uh, presentation, that uh, other than the conventional long course radiation, which actually reduces the local recurrence which brings down the local recurrence to 6 to 8%, but systemic recurrence is still higher. Systemic recurrence is still is, is, uh, up to 30 to 35%. So how we can actually reduce systemic recurrence, which is actually higher in lower and mid-rectal cancers, is by adding new adjuvant uh, chemotherapy to these regimes. So uh, if, if I can summarize uh, the, uh, uh, the message which are taken from this panel discussion is, that preoperative imaging by MR pelvis is a very important for determining proper indicator for new adjuvant radiation, particularly threatened CRM is a strong indication despite location of tumor. Clinical nodes positivity should not be the only indication for conventional LCRT, except in patients where it is near to CRM, as was mentioned by Dr. Shabnam. Maybe a few of the panelists will not agree with that. Nodes positivity or other high risk features on MRI like EMVI positivity should be considered for adding chemotherapy to radiation, TNT, as mentioned by Dr. Sahu and Dr. Sumit, because these are the patients which are actually at high risk for uh, systemic failures. 
if you are planning for any neoadjuvant treatment and yes upper upfront surgery has a role as mentioned by dr deepak and dr shabnam in provided surgeons can ensure good quality tme this is according to esmo guidelines and swinter preservation is not better with any of the approaches it is almost same whether you adopt short course with delayed surgery long course chemo radiation or short or tnt approaches most of the trials they have not proved that swinter preservation is better with any of the approaches focus should be on to minimize the local as well as distant recurrence uh, thank you if uh, we can have in uh, uh, discussion if we have some uh, other few points It yeah what is the panel discussion dr manish i mean i think every aspect is covered like that and uh, dr nikhil can you see any questions which are not answered in the uh, chat box so, till now uh, we tried and answered most of the questions dr shefali and if we continue the discussion now you want to do I the know. webisode yeah. <laughs> later <laughs> you will be barred <laughs> from the house so i, Absolutely, I, I really. think uh, it's it's time uh we we conclude and see uh, rectal cancer uh, what i have understood so far that we will have to tailor the approach to the imaging and the patient like uh, one one uh, approach will not suit every patient and here the integral role of uh, mri and surgeon and surgical planning comes into play so uh, i mean uh, that has to be uh, obviously mdt discussion and we have to get a very very good hands on on mr Uh, for these patients we we have to learn to see our mr we have to see the crm we have to see intracentric plane how far this is from anal verge and all those kind of things and then we have to also see what is our experience what is the data and then tailor our approach to uh, these things i mean i uh, would disagree with uh, rgci approach or uh, deepak's approach uh but like yes we generally do not use that approach we are either go for tnt or long course and sometimes short course so these 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 are very very variable things and uh, uh, we have just discussed two case scenario i'm sure manish has four or five or more but probably due to lack of time he couldn't take them up and uh, i mean more questions we can take it forward on some other forum or whatsapp or anything i mean these these things are almost never ending uh so with this we would want to conclude this session uh thank you very much and it was it was really excellent and you learn all the time every time you do this and this is this is really something which is which is very very exciting so uh and next we are talking about uh, surgery for rectal cancer so that's going to be pure surgical uh, talk technical based and uh, thank you very yeah, much thank, thank you, you once again all of you for spending your time contributing to academic discussion wonderful thank you so much Thank, Thank you so much for having us. Thank you.